Hey, mashed potatoes, are you keeping it together? I'm not. This quarantine has sucked the life right out of me, and it's been a real struggle to make any content for this channel. One of the things that fires me up is playing games that involve miniatures, but it's something I haven't done since February, I think. But nevertheless, I have managed to put together a little video with a couple of terrain projects that I think are pretty neat. For starters, I found some really cool scale A-frame tents. These plastic brackets come with vinyl shutters that you can buy at Lowe's, and their purpose is to stop shutters from getting flattened before they're sold. Now, a pair of shutters should yield about eight of these, even a small pair. Obviously, don't go out and buy pieces of real housing just to make play housing, but if you know someone who might be putting up vinyl shutters in the future, maybe ask them to hold on to these for you. I'm just going to trim the excess plastic off the corners with a safety knife. Then I'm going to get some wet paper towel, rub some white PVA glue into it, and then drape that over this plastic bracket. I do this two different ways, uh, either in segments or as a whole sheet, and the results are very similar. I set this outside on a warm and dry day to speed up the curing process, then it's back inside to paint it. Usually I'm going with a tan here. I'm going to dry brush some highlights on the top, and then I'm going to paint the interior brown and maybe give it a little muddy ring using some typhus corrosion around the edges. From start to finish, this project takes very little time. Maybe an hour altogether. You could probably knock out anywhere between four to eight of these in the same amount of time. As you can see, they're very much to scale with 28 millimeter figures, and they'd probably work in any era. World War II, modern, sci-fi, post-apocalypse, it's all good. Well, that's pretty cool. Now, I love the classic Warhammer 40k corner piece ruins. As you can see, I've painted up a set and really added on to it. But it doesn't offer a ton of cover. It's kind of a small piece of terrain. And similar pieces, official Warhammer ones or otherwise, can sell for quite a bit of money. Here's someone selling a 3D printed one for $11. And here's a pretty small pack of similar pieces for almost $70. Today, I want to make a couple of these that are much bigger and almost free since they're made out of trash. I start with the shelf out of a mini fridge my neighbors tossed out. As you can see, it kind of looks like a wall or a grate from uh, the em Evil Empire in Star Wars, something you might find on the Death Star. At least that's what it made me think of. Now, I've got a craft stick here that's gonna act as a corner piece. I'm gonna make two corner ruins and they're gonna hinge on this craft stick that's gonna sort of put them together. I'm just marking it as a halfway point with a little mechanical pencil here so I know where to cut on the craft stick. And I just use my little coping saw to cut that in half. No need for it to be perfectly flat at all because this is all getting covered up and it's supposed to be ruined. So if you cut it at an angle, it's all right. If you break it, it's okay. Now, breaking down that plastic shelf, I do that with a heavy pair of wire cutters. I got this plastic shelf out of a mini fridge my neighbors had uh, sitting on their lawn for a couple of months. And uh, it was under their deck. Well, what they had that passed for a deck. It's uh, been rebuilt recently. The place looks great. Uh, new neighbors. But um, before they left, quite a bit of trash to deal with. I uh, took the compressor and sold it at a scrapyard because the uh, the neighbor, <laughs> he, he owed me a bunch of money. <laughs> so that's how I, uh, I felt justified in doing so and uh, I still do. Anyway, I'm gonna cut this into corners here. Just four pieces. If it cracks or snaps in a weird way, that's fine. I think the important thing is that it sort of starts off high at the corner and tapers down. Now I'm gluing all this together with E6000. So I'm just doing a nice long strip here with the piece of shelf I have. And I'm just connecting that to the craft stick. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other segment of shelf. And we're going to just make a right angle <clears throat> as if it were the corner of a structure. I'm just going to put those together, squeeze them together. And the E6000 should bond to the wooden plastic enough that you don't need to use a clamp or sit here and monitor it. It'll, it'll hold itself enough. Uh, for it to cure on its own, and you won't really need to fret about it too much. And you see, I've done that twice. Now, I'm going to add a floor 
uh, a sort of a floor grate to our ruins, and that's just coming from an old fan with a burned out motor. We lost a fan just a few months ago, and I saved the cover of it uh, just for projects like this. I knew I'd, I'd want to use this to either make catwalks or uh, cages or something, something for a 40K. So uh, once again, clipping that out with a wire cutter, and then I'm going to take my Dremel tool and just sort of even it out so when I glue it in with the E6000, it's nice and flush. Here I am just sort of modeling it. I don't want it to be uh, perfectly pristine floor grate, so I'm just cutting out a piece of it here so it looks a little damaged. And then when that's ready to go, a little E6000 on it, and then I sit it on its side so that gravity is holding my floor grate in place. I'm just going to glue that into it. There's a, sort of a natural lip there on the shelf, which is a perfect place for my floor grate. So far, just garbage, a little bit of craft wood, and some E6000. That's all that's involved. Now I have my Rolotex paint additive, and this time I'm actually going to show you me applying it. You can't see me mixing it up, but I've put that in a bunch of other videos. You just put that in a plastic cup you're going to toss, and then add in some acrylic paint that you have a lot of. I have a lot of this bright green poster paint. It's not a particularly good one for miniatures, but there's a ton of it, and uh, mixes just fine with the paint additive. And then I just start smearing that on um, where the concrete would be in a building. So I sort of want to cover up that goofy craft stick. I don't want people to see that anyway. We're going to cover that up. And then I just sort of wrap it around the bottom also to give the whole thing kind of a base. And the overall effect is sort of pitted out, maybe melted concrete, sort of a eroded look. Once again, I have yet to apply this Rolotex paint additive in a way that hasn't pleased me great. Take the stuff outside, let it cure in a hot, warm, dry day, and when it's ready to take some paint, I'm gonna come back at it with some flat black spray paint from the dollar store. So far, the cost of this project, next to nothing. And uh, when you see how big this piece of terrain is for 40K, it's, it's really quite impressive. Now, it's back inside for some painting. And I just start with a little dry brushing on the metallic bits that are coming up. It's going to be the Great Empire shelving that's coming up out of the wall there. Just some quick dry brushing. Doesn't have to be super dry. Just getting some metal on there. If a little bit gets on the brickwork, that's okay too. We're going to paint over that. And we're going to hit the brickwork, the concrete with some gray. Just going over that. We're going to eventually add some highlights to that gray as well just a slightly lighter color me I had a little bit of lemonade acrylic paint but uh, after that a little rust effect on the metal and I just do that by stippling some red on with a really cheap vinyl brush it's the types that come with uh, kids sets of um, watercolors start with a little red and then I come back at it with some yellow and go over the red spots with the yellow and that blending I go back and forth red yellow red yellow and uh, that blending gives you a pretty passable rust color Let's take a look at the finished product. As you can see, you can fit an entire 10-man squad of Space Marines behind the walls of this, get them fully in cover. You can spread it out a little more, get some of those more modern Marines in there as well. As always, guys, if you like the channel, please hit that like button, hit, hit subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, consider donating to my GoFundMe campaign. Come say hi to us on the Facebook or the Discord. The links for all of those are in the description below. And hopefully I'll have another video up for you soon, guys. Until next time, keep mashing those miniatures, I guess.